In this video, I'm going to cover the next steps after you've passed your Cisco CCNA certification in terms of what is the best certification to do next. So if you've just passed your CCNA or if you're planning on doing it in the near future and you're not sure what to do after that, then keep watching. The first thing to say is congratulations on passing the CCNA. Whether you just passed or you did the exam a while ago or you're currently studying towards it, but you are going to get it, by getting the CCNA, that's giving you a really solid foundation for the rest of your IT career. But things don't stop here, right? We need to keep moving forward. So you're going to want to get more certification to give you even more benefits moving forward with your career. And the reason that we need to keep moving and keep doing more certification is for the same reasons that you did the CCNA in the first place. I know this is stating the obvious, but you want to have a good salary. You want to have job security. And by that, I don't mean not worried about getting fired from your current position, but things happen. You know, maybe you do leave for some kind of reason and it's always good to be able to sleep secure at night knowing that if anything does happen you can just walk straight into another job because your resume looks that good other reasons are you want to be a valued member of the team and also you want to be doing work that interests you and that you enjoy so we'll keep that in mind as we look at what certifications we're going to do in future the main considerations that you want to think about really there's three of these first thing to do is research the job market and the way to do that is by looking at the job boards for example on monster or wherever it jobs are advertised in your particular area find that out log on and just look at what kind of jobs are being advertised for what jobs are in demand and what qualifications are required to get those jobs those are the qualifications that you want to have and you want to keep a track of what's in demand right now and also look at trends see what appears to be becoming more popular and is going to be in more demand in future and that's going to give you a really good idea on how you should be positioning yourself other things that are important what is relevant to your current job because you want to be doing a good job there right Another thing is that this is going to make you more valued to your employer. And if you're going to study for a certification that is very relevant to your current job, they'll probably pay for it as well. So it's a win-win doing something that is relevant to your current job. It gives benefit to your employer. And again, it goes on your resume. It's good for your future career. And lastly, what interests you? So you see there's going to be different options that are available. Pick one that you're actually interested in and that you're going to get excited about because that's going to make the studying a lot more fun. It's going to make it go a lot quicker. You're going to get a lot more enjoyment out of it. So those are really the three main considerations I would say to bear in mind when considering your next certification. So let's actually look at the next certification options because you've just done the Cisco CCNA makes a logical sense to carry on down the Cisco path. If you are going to do that, I would say that right now there's three qualifications that are most relevant to do after the CCNA routing and switching. First one is the CCNP routing and switching again. The reason for this is now this next thing is actually counterintuitive because you can get the CCNA by sitting just one exam. To get the CCNP, you need to sit four additional exams. So I remember when I was first thinking about this and I thought, wow, you know, there was a lot of topics covered in the CCNA and that was one exam. If there's four exams for CCNP, it must be a crazy amount of information. But that's not actually the case at all. Once you've got your CCNA 
I'd say you're around 90% of the way to getting your CCNP. If you go on the Cisco website and you look at the topics on the CCNA and on the CCNP, you will see that the topics are exactly the same. They're both covering routing and switching. With the CCNP, it just goes in a little bit more detail. So it really makes a lot of logical sense to do the CCNP routing and switching next because you're already around 90% of the way there. You've got the information fresh in your head because you've just done the CCNA. It's really not a lot of extra effort to get the CCNP. And a big benefit that you get from doing this is a lot less people get the CCNP than get the CCNA. A lot of people that are working in different areas in IT, not just in networking, maybe in a side area, like maybe they're on server admin or maybe storage admin, they think it would be good for them to get the CCNA as well. And they're right, it is good for them to diversify across the different areas. But those kind of engineers, typically they'll stop once they'll get the CCNA because it's not their main focus in their job. They don't go further on than that. So if you do get the CCNP routing and switching, it positions you as more of a networking expert. When everybody's got the CCNA, it makes you more attractive in the job market. All of the employers, they don't know that it's just a little bit more to get the CCNP. You appear to be much more skilled in networking by doing that. Not so hard to do it, although it is four more exams, but it's definitely a good choice to do the CCNP routing and switching next. If you're not going to do CCMP routing and switching next, I'd say the other two most relevant choices now are CCNA security or CCNA data center. The reason for that is that they are the two other CCNAs that are in the most demand in the job market right now. If you want to see what all different tracks are available, you can go to the Cisco certification website and you can see down here under associate, there's a lot of different CCNAs available. My advice is do either security or data center. In fact, some of these are in very little demand in the job market and they're not going to really give your career a huge boost. Now, another thing while I'm talking about that again, as mentioned earlier, it also depends on your current job. If you're currently working a lot on IP video and IP telephony, then CCNA collaboration would be a great choice for you. So also remember to bear those three considerations in mind that I spoke about earlier on. Okay, so those are the, the most relevant Cisco certifications to do next. But there's not just Cisco, there's not just networking. And you can give your resume a really big boost by becoming what's known as a full stack engineer. A full stack engineer is somebody that's got skills across the entire data center, not just in networking. So they have skills in networking, also in server operating systems like Windows and Linux, in server virtualization, like VMware, and also in storage. And if you are gonna do this, Typically, you're not going to get to a super advanced level on all of those different domains. If you're going to be a network engineer, you're going to specialize in that, but it's good to have some knowledge across the different domains as well. The reason is around 10, 15 years ago, if you were on the networking team, really, you didn't need to know anything about servers or about storage because the job roles were all in their own separate compartments and there was very little overlap. But that's not the case now. Now that virtualization is so prevalent everywhere, there's a lot of great areas, there's a lot of overlap between the different job roles and it's going to make you a lot more valuable to employers if you've got skills across all of them. Now, while I'm talking about this, if you're thinking now, oh, so I have to learn this, I have to learn that, I have to learn that too, it's so overwhelming, you're not going to do it all in a day. When you're working through your career and as you're doing this certification, it's baby steps, okay? Each certification is a giant leap, but you're going to be taking baby steps towards each certification. So if you're just starting out, everybody started out the same as you as well. Even people that are super well qualified, they didn't do it all in a day. What they did was they did one certification, then another one, and then another one. So it's like dominoes and you'll build momentum. So a big piece of advice I would give you, I didn't mention earlier, is keep going. 
if you stop and then start and stop and start, it's always difficult to start again. So once you get one certification, do another one, do another one, will fall over like dominoes. And when you do it like that, it really doesn't take long at all. If you do want to become a full stack engineer, you can achieve it in a few years. Again, it's not a few days, it's a few years, but this is great because the difficulty of this means that not many people do it. If you do become a full stack engineer who's got multiple different certifications, that's what gives you that great job security where you know it doesn't matter what happens, you're always gonna be in a great job with a great salary doing work that you love. Okay, so to become a full stack engineer, you're gonna be doing other vendor certifications. The kind of certifications that are available there are VMware. Now, something to tell you about VMware, the main certification for this is the VCP, the VMware Certified Professional. And unfortunately, to get the certification, you need to have sat in an official VMware class, either in the classroom or online, but you can't get training yourself online as a cheaper option. You can take that training, you can learn about it, but to get the actual official VCP certification, you need to sit the official v VMware training, which obviously is comparatively expensive. So this is one I would recommend if at all possible, get your employer to pay for it because it's gonna be quite expensive to get that. Other ones you can do are Microsoft, like the MCSA and the MCSE, they're also valuable as well. And one that's super popular right now is AWS, Amazon Web Services. There are, those are what I would say would be the best ones to do now in no particular order. Other vendor certifications are available. And again, this comes back to what is relevant in your current job role. So if you're in your current job role, maybe you're working with Juniper routers and switches as well, which would then mean it would make sense to do a Juniper certification. Another thing to think about is the current and future trends. So one I would say now is current, it's actually been around for a while, is cloud. So AWS and Azure, you can do certification on them and they're fairly new, so there's still a lot of demand for them in the marketplace. You'll find that when a technology really takes off, there's always going to be high demand because at that point in time, there's more jobs than there are people qualified to do them. So if you're the person that's qualified, it makes you very attractive in the job market and you can get a great job. Looking forward, I'd say a future trend, it's already started, but there hasn't been huge uptake on it yet, but it will happen more in future, is on the networking side, SDN, Software Defined Networking. And this requires some programming skills, usually mostly in Python. Now, with this, there's not really certification for it yet, but I expect that that is gonna change very soon and certification will soon become available. So this is something that would be really good in future. Okay, so that is everything. Hopefully I haven't given you overwhelm there to bring it back down to a manageable level again let's go back to this slide here and summarize it to say what i advise you to do next after the ccna routing and switching number one do not stop keep going keep that momentum it's going to be really beneficial for your career the best qualifications to do next if you're going to stick with cisco would be ccnp routing and switching or ccnp security or CCNA data center. Which one you're gonna do, again, it comes back to those considerations again, research the job market, what's relevant to your current job and what interests you. I'd probably lean slightly towards CCNP routing and switching because you already know 90% of it already and it's gonna position you as that next level up as a network engineer. If you want to try something different from Cisco and broaden your qualifications a bit more, then it would be good to look at certifications from VMware, Microsoft, and AWS. If you do want to become a full stack engineer, you can take my introduction to SAN and NAS storage course by clicking the link above my head. It's designed specifically for network engineers. It's only 90 minutes long, but it'll still give you a really good foundational understanding of storage. Okay, that's everything from me. See you in the next one.